all good things must come to an end. And unfortunately, that does include the Flames winning streak. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Locked On Flames. As always, I am your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Today, we're going to talk about the missteps that led to that overtime loss, how things can improve, and where things are kind of at uh, in terms of to the few off days, as well as being back at practice today ahead of tomorrow night's game against the Penguins. Make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts, as well as YouTube. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week. Your Calgary Flames every day. So what transpired in Seattle is what I expect from the Flames. And that doesn't mean I have very low expectations. Well, I do have low expectations. I feel like that is more of the speed that this team uh, can sustainably play. And that's tough. That is very tough to watch. However, I will give props to Dan Vladar for really holding it down as long as he could with the with the defense that was in front of him and just how sloppy it kind of all looked, uh, it was just skillless in Seattle. It was tough. It was a tough look. And there was just little to no control over the puck. And it felt like it was just very, there was like a lack of basic skills And that's infuriating to watch because you know that these players are some of the best players in the world. And what do you mean? (laughs) You, You can't hold onto the puck. You take meaningless penalties. Like, accidents happen, sure. But it was just a very tough game to watch. And one of the biggest issues I think that this team has run into time and time again, even last year, is just taking too many penalties. The goal that they gave, the tying goal that they gave up was on a power play. So it's avoidable. And I think, you know, last year it was kind of a running joke in the year before about how Zadorov just took as many high sticking penalties as he possibly could in a game. There isn't that, that like, <laughs> that fall guy this year. And I think that it's really a matter of them just kind of digging deep and playing smarter hockey. And we know that this team is full of good players. We, we heard them talk. We all watched the first four games of the season. We know that this, like, there are talented players, but it's not just a matter of talent. You need to have the discipline and the mindset. And taking so many penalties over and over and over again this early on in the season is going to be detrimental to this team if they think they're going anywhere. And, you know, if you're Team Tank, you're probably like, yes, take all the penalties you want. But if you're wanting to watch good hockey, (laughs) I suppose you're uh, kind of frustrated and just over it. And I don't necessarily think that this is something that the Flames should keep up. And I think that they (laughs) think that they can lose hockey games on their own. They don't need to be sending anyone to the uh, to the penalty box to have to accomplish that. The defense looked like the defense I expected it to. You know, I had my concerns over the summer 
about, uh, you know, just not having your top two penalty killers and Noah Hannafin and Chris Tanev, like you don't have them. And that's a huge blow to your blue line and roster in general. So, you know, kind of trying to make up for like a true shutdown defenseman in Chris Tanev is not easy. You know, obviously Mackenzie Weger does a great job. He's a great shutdown defenseman as well, but you can't, <laughs> you can't rely on him to do the things that Chris Tanev did. He's not afraid to throw his body in front of a puck, clearly, but Weger is younger and has a lot more hockey ahead of him, so I don't think that that's necessarily sustainable. And that is the theme of this season, is sustainability. It's like a recycling mother nature promotion here, sustainability. But I really think that, you know, Noah Hannafin was, is a good hockey player. Like I don't have any gripes necessarily like, yeah, was he caught out of position a few times? Sure. But when, when aren't players, uh, his stats to begin the season with Vegas, not necessarily great either, but you need players that can rise to that occasion. And I think that you're going to get that with uh, Bruce Dewich and maybe even Grushnikov. I think that those two guys right there are ones that you can look for in that. Uh, Miramanov does a great job too. I just think, again, it's a matter of everyone being on the same page, um, the same paragraph, the same line of the same exact book. Otherwise, we are all in different planets. And there's no way to communicate with each other. And, you know, Kevin Ball and Jake Bean, you know what you're getting with them. You know what you're getting with them. And Kevin Ball, just, I don't think he's necessarily looked that great. Um, I think that there have been times where I'm questioning why he's even in the position he's in. He's, you know, there was one goal, one of the first two games, where he just did not, like, he was just standing in front of the net. He didn't, like, try to defend or anything. Like, he was just, he was just there, hanging out, having a good time. But coming up next, we are going to talk about some post-practice thoughts, uh, what's going on with Igor Sharangovich, and more. And we will be right back after this. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for candidates isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree that Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. And your and listeners of this show will get a 75 75- Dollar sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility on indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to indeed.com slash locked on right now and show support for our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire you. Need Indeed. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out with me today on Locked on Flames. Make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. We're here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week, your team every day. So today, the Flames were back on the ice for practice. What a nice little treat. Uh, They've only played (laughs) one game in the last six days, and that's bananas to me. I feel like they <laughs> they obviously it, it's a long season. That's not that's not a secret. But I feel like it's just been so spread out. 
uh, or it was like so condensed and now like we're we're spreading out even further and I don't know we've got a we've got a lot of time ahead of us but let's see Pat Steinberg posted the lines for today and there's still no Sharon Govich. Uh, I haven't even seen anything that said like he's skating on his own yet or anything. So I'm really interested to see what's kind of going on there and what develops there. Um, I think there's going to have to be serious lineup adjustments when he comes back, but, uh, We'll have to see. So the top line today was Kuzmenko, Kadri, and Coronado. And Coronado is obviously sticking up on th that top line after Sam Hanzik is listed as week to week with an upper body injury. Connor Zary, Michael Backlund, and Blake Coleman are your second line, along with Huberto, Pospisil, and Mantha, and Lomberg, Kirkland, and Cap Klapka. <laughs> Uh, rounding out your fourth line. I am curious to see, like, I think Pospisil has been good at center. I think he's been fine. He's been, you know, pretty decent, good even. But I wonder if they do shift him back to a winger role after, you know, if there is a drop-off in production or say you know, Sam Morton gets called up or something, whatever the case may be, I think at some point they are going to put him back on a wing. And your defensive pairings are Kevin Ball with Rasmus Anderson, Uyghur and Miramanov, Bean with Pahal and your uh, I guess Odman out, uh, Hanley and Barry with uh, Kevin Rooney and Vladar and Wolf. Um, I just really hope that they continue to do the every other kind of rotation for the goalies. I think that that has been proven to be successful so far. And, you know, for whatever reason, if They do stray away from it. I hope that, like, there's reasoning and, like, justification for it. I think that, you know, obviously a coach is going to make a decision regardless, but sometimes decisions feel very silly. <laughs> and I would expect Wolf to start uh, tomorrow against the Penguins. Just uh, my assumption. But based on uh, Pat's lineup. It kind of looks like Vladar was in the starting net. So I'm interested. Uh, you know, that's obviously something we'll keep an eye on, but I, I hope that we do see some more offense and we're able to kind of get something back after that game, because it's not like the pressure of winning is kind of off now, right? Because like when you're on a winning streak, especially to start the season when everyone's already kind of doubted you, there's that added external pressure of being that good and being continuing that um, success. And I don't necessarily think that, you know, teams are really looking for in-season success. They want the prize at the end. <laughs> and I, I'm i hopeful that the Flames are able to, you know, it, it's a loss. And it's not even like it was like a horrendous, like six to one loss. It was a two to one loss in overtime. They stuck around for 60 minutes, did what they could, and a sloppy turnover just uh, got away from them. I'm still very like con I don't want to say confused like where's where is the updated timeline on Sharon Govich is there not even an updated timeline but is there a timeline period because you know when he started this season on IR it kind of sounded like okay like we're just gonna you know take our time and have him ease his way back in but 
it's um it's been a little bit and again not even skating on his own kevin rooney who had a concussion was skating is skating on his own went from that non-contact jersey to a regular jersey within a uh a day of each other so what's going on there i know that they don't really like to be transparent in hockey in general but it would be nice to get some kind of idea for when he could return uh, for the sake of the rest of the lineup and i'm sure everyone kind of knows that things are fluid but I would like to see, I would like some sort of confirmation of sorts, but when he does come back to the lineup, how long is it going to take him to catch up and get up to speed, especially as more time goes on? Uh, Is he going to play lower in the lineup this year? Last year he was on the top line, but does that mean that he's going to go right back there? Could we see him maybe go to uh, where Pospisil is centering and then that's when they move Pospisil to someone's wing? Is That is an, uh, an option, I suppose. But coming up next, we are going to wrap up the show with how they can play better tomorrow against the Penguins because... There's only there are still 70 something games left this season, and we can minimize performance Saturday's performance. Like, there's only so many times we can watch that. So, we will be right back after this. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-plays, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. I would be willing to say uh, you can hammer the over tomorrow, considering Tristan Jari is not necessarily a good goaltender. Um... So just hit hit the over there and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first ever $5 bet. That is FanDuel.com. Thanks everyone for hanging out with me today on Locked on Flames. You can follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. So I think... One thing that, like, Monday morning quarterbacking is something that happens in every situation, regardless of, like, professional sports or, you know, like, a first date or, you know, just a day, like, your day job. And Saturday's game is the perfect game to do that and to be, like, the first true, like, ugh okay, we really have to look at this and what what would we do differently? And I think obviously I mentioned it before, but the amount of penalties has to change. It has to decrease. When I say change, I don't mean increase. The Flames penalty kill just is not what it used to be and the Flames cannot rely on um that bailing them out. They also don't have Jacob Markstrom in net, who, you know, was consistently able to bail them out and have those uh, Vesna caliber saves night after night. But the defense just has to show up and they have to be disciplined. They have to go out there, play in position, and not be reckless in their decision making and really thoughtful <laughs> uh, especially in front of Dustin Wolf. I Vladar can kind of hold his own a little bit better, but Dustin Wolf, while he's still getting situated, I really don't want to see the flames just 
completely abandon the blue line. <laughs> um, tomorrow, I would fully expect, you know, Tristan Jari to to stink. I was listening to 32 Thoughts this morning, and it kind of sounded like the Penguins uh, were potentially exploring putting Jari on waivers, but it just didn't happen. And they, they haven't been able to trade for him because or trade him because he's been so bad. There's no market for him. So I do wonder, uh, you know, the, the penguins are three and four. That is not going to last well, last long. <laughs> uh something that is, you know, go like they missed the playoffs last year, and I don't think that that's necessarily a foot that they want to start off on this year. Um, but I, I really don't know what you can expect from them other than like Sidney Crosby <laughs> because just because of their consistency issues and they're very much like the flames in terms of getting to this point where they're like consistently inconsistent because I remember last season and obviously this is last season, but they would get good for like chunks of time, but then they would like backslide. And that that's very Calgary flames of them. I, I think that they're going to have the better goaltending. I think that, you know, um, the defense feels kind of, mm -hmm. I do think that, you know, even if it's Wolf or Vladar, I think the Flames are in a better position. But what I do wonder is if down the road, say the Penguins do find themselves in a playoff spot, could they be interested in a goalie? Dan Vladar, you were a Colorado Avalanche a, and a Toronto Maple Leaf last year. You were everywhere. I was sending you everywhere. How would you like to be back in the black and yellow? But this time, for the Penguins. <laughs> Dan Vladar, you are a Pittsburgh Penguin. Uh, at some point, I will get this right. I just don't know when. <laughs> I'm very... Um... I wouldn't say hopeful. I have an expectation of the Flames, as they should of themselves, to play a full 60-minute effort. What I feel like we've been seeing um, are chunks of that. You know, whether it's coming out, like, firing out of the cannon the first half of the first period, or maybe you carry it through the first half of the game, and then they fizzle out. Or they just decide to show up in the third period and, you know, they catch their opponent taking their foot off the gas and then they crank it up. And it's just kind of like, what, what do you bring to the table other than 15 minutes of hockey in a 60 minute game? And I, that's not who this team is. And that's not the type of work ethic that they have um, preached. That's not the kind of effort that they all stand behind. So I would like to see just more effort. <laughs> I know that that feels like a cop out, but there needs to be more effort on um, just shooting the puck winning the face-offs, less time in the penalty box. There just, there has to be a change somewhere. And I think even if you just like tweak it just a little bit, you will come out ahead of things. And that will do it for me today. 
on this episode of Locked on Flames. Thank you all so much for hanging out with me and, and kicking off your week with Locked on Flames. I hope you all have a great rest of your Monday and Tuesday. And uh, you can follow the show wherever you get your podcasts as well as YouTube. We are here for you Monday through Friday, five days a week. Your Calgary Flames every day. And until next time, stay safe, stay warm, stay dry, stay cool, stay hydrated. I saw it was snowing, so get your mittens out, and I will see you all tomorrow.